Hi everyone, today I'd like to discuss about what is arguably the most important advice to avoid making big mistakes in your games. And the idea is to not have undefended pieces that we also call loose pieces. This idea is actually summarized in a very well-known phrase that goes, loose pieces drop off. But I want to dig deeper into this idea because very often this concept is used when we're having a bad position or when we defend. But as we see, we can actually use this pretty much as a very general idea to improve our position or even when we attack. So let's get started with the first crystal clear example. Here in this position, it is black to play, but let's first evaluate the overall placement of black pieces. All of black pieces are protected except for this knight on h5. So this knight is a loose piece, but very importantly, this knight can be attacked because this idea of having a loose piece, if we have it in our camp and it cannot be attacked by our opponent, it is actually not a big deal. But here this knight on h5 can potentially be attacked in many different ways. For example, g4 might be an idea, bishop to e2 would also attack the knight, queen to e2 or queen to d1 are different ways on which the knight on h5 can be attacked. So with that in mind, what idea might be to protect the knight or bring it back to security? For example, knight to f6 makes some sense because now the knight is defended and additionally now the knight is even better placed because the knight on h5 was not doing a lot. The knight on f6 is eyeing very important central squares like e4 and d5. So this was a possible move, but considering that black had previously played knight to h5, it is maybe psychologically difficult to go backwards immediately after making a move. But in the game Black decided to continue developing, which makes a lot of sense. Normally moving one piece several times in the opening just goes against opening principles. So here Black had the idea to develop the bishop on f8 and then castle. And here this bishop can develop to three squares, e7, d6 or c5. It cannot go to b4 because the pawn a3 would capture the bishop. So here move like bishop to e7 or bishop to c5 was actually quite playable, but instead black decided to develop the bishop to d6. And we now see that the bishop on d6 is also undefended, so this should already give us a red alert. So here we see that the bishop on d6 and the knight on h5 are loose. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to lose the game, but we should definitely be careful because tactical ideas can easily appear in such positions. And in fact here white had a very simple move, queen to d1, which is one of the moves that would attack the knight on h5. This also attacks the bishop on d6 and there's no way to deal with these two threats. So the game is now pretty much over because what will win a piece and have a decisive material advantage. And amazingly, this is just a very basic mistake made by a former world champion. And by the way, I have a video about the top five blunders made by world champions that you might wanna check after watching this video. So let's now evaluate another instructive position. Here it is white to play. White is actually in trouble in this position. White has two minor pieces and a pawn for a queen. So black has a material advantage, but white can try to hold this position. And in this position here, Kasparov played the move d5, which is ambitious in a position where white should start looking for defensive ideas. So here, first of all, we can see that this rook on b2 is loose as it is this bishop on e4. And after the move d5, now this diagonal is even weakened, so there might be more tactical ideas appearing in the position. And additionally, the pawn d5 is also limiting this bishop on e4. I see the point that white might want to push this pass pawn, but white is in no position to start getting ambitious because white's pieces are simply not well coordinated. And here after the move queen to a4, this is already asking questions to white because now the bishop on e4 can be attacked after playing d5. And here white should have defended the bishop, for example, rook to e2, and then try to coordinate the pieces in a way that would defend each other. We'll see this idea a bit later. But here Kasparov played the move bishop to f3. Again, this should already give us a red alert because all of white pieces are loose in this position. And this is actually a very basic mistake because after the move queen to a3, black is going to win material. Now black is attacking the bishop and the rook, and there's no good way for white to deal with those threats. So here you might argue that this was in a rapid game where it is difficult to calculate lines, but I would even say that whenever you play with faster time controls or if you don't have time, trying to have your pieces defending each other is a very important practical way to play. 
So in this position, White should have tried to aim for a fortress by getting his bases to defend each other. So here, Black might have ideas to go Queen to f1, so King to g2 was an interesting move here, and then try to follow up with f3. For example, here after a move like Rook to g8, the Rook has to stay on the 8th rank because otherwise Rook to b8 would create checkmating ideas for White. So here after a move like Rook to e8, White has his idea to play f3 and then go Rook to f2, for example, if Black attacks the Rook, now Rook to f2, White doesn't have to wait for the Rook to be attacked. The point is to have this setup where all of White pieces are defending each other. So White has excellent drawing chances in this position because it is just very hard for Black to progress. So, but as I said, this idea is actually very powerful even when we have an advantage. Like in this position where White has an extra pawn. Here Fisher played the move King to G3, which again, we see that would leave a lot of white pieces undefended. And this allowed Black to find a very nice saving resource by playing Queen takes E4. And the idea is that after pawn takes and knight takes, we get this fork and Black is actually even getting the advantage. Or if white tries the intermediate move queen takes e3 given a check, this is even worse because after pawn takes and pawn takes, c2, this pawn is just going to promote and black is even winning the game. And here in this position, Fisher played the move queen to f2 and the players quickly agreed to a draw. But here white had other options. I just want to mention that king to g3 is not necessarily a bad idea, but in that position it didn't work because of this idea of having too many loose pieces. But here in this position, White could have tried at least to press because White has an advantage. And one idea might be to play g5, just trying to push this pass pawn. And Black might try to stop it, for example, with a move like queen to h5. And here in this particular position, king to g3 would be an interesting try because now Black doesn't have this tactic of taking on e4 with the queen. And then try to activate this bishop on f1, which is sitting quite passive. But again, just to illustrate here, if you don't have a lot of time and you have to make a quick decision, I think that the move king to g1 here is a very practical try. And then just follow up with queen to g2. For example, after queen to g4, play queen to g2. And we see how all of white pieces are defended. We get this pass pawn trying to advance. So here we're pressing with pretty much no risk of blundering. And all the pressure is on black to try to hold this position. Here Black might have some interesting defensive ideas that might be very hard to find, like even a check on the squares, but in this position I would say that it is just very hard to lose this as white. So let's finish this idea with a more complicated position. Here we get a very sharp game. Black has an extra pawn, but white has open lines trying to attack Black's king. So white's king is much safer than Black's. So white has a lot of compensation in this position. And here actually white has a lot of options. This knight is being attacked, so there might even be the idea to retreat the knight or to go knight to a5. But here Kasparov tried to keep the knight on c4 by using the pin against the pawn on b5. So here the idea is to move the bishop somewhere and Kasparov played the move bishop to d6. Which I would say is a bit of a risky move because even though black might not capture the knight on c4, if white ever moves the knight on c4, this bishop on d6 would be hanging. So ultimately, confirming where bishop to d6 is good or bad will come down to concrete calculation. But if Kasparov had this idea of moving the bishop, it was probably more practical to just go bishop to a3, where this bishop is very safe and still very active on this diagonal. And here the game could have continued rook to a8, which is an idea to protect the pawn on a6, and then just try to bring the knight to d3, for example, after rook to b1. And here if black plays something like rook to a7, there was this idea to play queen to b3. And if black wants to break the pin, now knight to b2 is very strong because the knight might get back to c5. And now there's even pressure on d5 with the queen on b3. So not surprisingly, in this position, white pieces, even though they are trying to attack, they are all well protected. And this is definitely not a forcing line, but I just want to show how white pieces would coordinate very well here. Because the move bishop to d6, even though it's an interesting idea, it is definitely a riskier one. One of white's ideas is that after taking, knight takes, would fork the king and the queen. But here black calmly played the move rook to a8, which is a very interesting move because now it overprotects the pawn a6. 
again using this principle of not having loose or weak pieces and this would free the king on b7 so even though black is under pressure black is using this principle of having pieces that protect each other and here in this position Kasparov could have kept his advantage by simply going back with the bishop for example to a3 or c5 again it is difficult to admit your mistake and go back and here taking on c7 was not particularly strong because black has this very interesting idea of taking with the king and now the king might even have ideas to evacuate to the king's side. So after rook to a8 Kasparov tried the move queen to b1 and here Petrosian played this very nice move king to c6 just breaking the pin so now taking on c4 is a threat and there's also the idea to capture the bishop if the knight moves. So the position is still very complex Kasparov should have tried taking on c7 but instead he sacrificed the piece by going rook b to a3 but Petrosian simply captured the material b takes c4 and after rook takes rook takes and rook takes white doesn't have compensation for the piece here Petrosian played bishop to b6 knight 7 to b6 was also very strong but after bishop to b6 bishop to c5 queen to d8 again very instructive black pieces are protecting each other so there's no way for white to break through after queen to a1 knight takes pawn takes black capture with the king black had this very nice king on c5 which cannot be easily attacked because black coordinated his pieces very well and white doesn't have enough firepower so in this position Kasparov played rook to a4 and then resigned because this is just a desperate position for white. So keep in mind this very important idea, when in doubt do not have loose pieces but also watch out for your opponent's loose pieces because very often they can be attacked and captured. If you like this video please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.